moving from experimental statistics to statistical production, uh, two use cases, one is OBEC, the second one is OJA. This hands-on training was initially dedicated for web intelligence network members because we noted during NTTS conference in Brussels that not so many of you are using Data Lab. And uh, that's why it is in fact ad hoc training session, which means that it wasn't planned in advance. Uh, and we will have several different exercises today. All of you should follow the exercises, which means that all of you should have an opportunity to learn a little bit how to use uh, Web Intelligence Hub today, Web Intelligence Platform and Data Hub. So uh, I would like uh, to say a few words that uh, there are five contributors to this presentation, uh, myself, then in alphabetical order, uh, Matthias Mesarosz, uh, who checked all the scripts that I prepared, then Fernando Reich, who will give also a presentation about what is exactly in the data lab, what tables, what variables, and will, gives you, uh, will give you a, a possibility, of course, to read more uh, by providing some links. Uh, then Alexander Skibinski, who is also from Eurostat, so he was uh, very helpful in providing some help in preparation of some select queries. And Raquel Tello de Faria Paulino, uh, who was uh, also supporting Fernando in preparation of the presentation for today. So let me start with the agenda. Uh, first part with this first link. Uh, from 11 to 12.30 is a review of tables with examples. It will be 90 minutes, but first of all, Fernando will start the review of all OJA tables, and later we will demonstrate all the tables in Data Lab. And then participants, which means you, will be instructed how to execute commands, how to limit the data, uh, how to filter the data uh, from the Data Lab. Then we have a break half an hour, we will disconnect, and we are connecting one more time uh, with different link. So uh, Sarah Phelps uh, gave us two links. You received uh, two links from Sarah Phelps. Uh, the second link is different one, so we are not staying at the same meeting. We will switch to another meeting at 1 p.m., and we will continue exercises, examples, how to execute commands, different commands uh, in Data Lab, and then you will have an opportunity to prove your to prove that you learned something uh, during the meeting today. So you will receive some exercises to solve, and solutions will be published after five to ten minutes of uh, after each of the exercise uh, will be provided. And important notes from Sarah: sessions are recorded, which means that yes, uh, it is. Uh, uh, we've got this uh, indicator in the Teams at the moment that it is recorded. And uh, then there is a feedback survey at the end of the meeting. And advanced training is planned on in October, on October 17th, but it is a tentative date, which means that maybe we will change this in the future. Uh, but still, uh, we are thinking about more advanced training because today we will cover only fundamentals of the use of data lab. So, uh, Sarah, would you like to add something regarding the feedback or regarding the organizational issues? Yes, thank you, Yasak. Um, we put a feedback survey out for any of the events that we operate. Um, it is important. Um, it will take you about five minutes to answer. Um, we need to know what your views are on the events that we put on, what the training, how we communicate it. Um, this all is very important to the project. Um, so I will put a link into the chat and I will also email a link to everybody that attends. Um, if you could be could complete that, really would be appreciative. And you will all be my favourite persons today. 
we will, as Yasak said, we are recording this and we will be putting it up on our YouTube channel. Um, I will also send the links round to you so you can see once uh, it's all up there. So you've got the links. So keep an eye out for that. And that will probably come around at some point next week for you. OK, if anybody has any questions for me about the recording, about the survey, drop me a message. You can put it in the chat. If you can't access the chat, drop me an email and I will come back to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you. We'll repeat this uh, also at the end of the second session. And now I would like to go to the first part. Before Fernando will start, I would like to give you some background. The first part is on the review of tables and examples. And in the introduction, I would like to tell you about the objectives of this meeting, of this uh, training session. First of all, the goal is to understand the nature of the use of SQL language in OJA Data Lab. But I would like to emphasize something that we are using Data Lab that is the same for OPEC, for example. So it is still the same environment. So it's not only the training session on OJA Data Lab, but on Web Intelligence Hub itself. Yes, one of the functionalities of Web Intelligence Hub is the Data Lab. So we will train today how to use Python language to execute SQL queries in OJA Data Lab, but this knowledge can be transferred to other use cases because uh, the same environment is used for other use cases. Of course, we don't have data. We need to use platform to download the data for other use cases, uh, but still it means that uh, you will have this opportunity to learn today how to use uh, SQL queries in Python and how to use data frames to get some data. Yes, the slides will be shared. The slides are important because there are practical examples, and uh, I think this is the starting point for all of you. So, Pina, uh, the slides will be shared. Uh, then, uh, the goal is to become familiar with tables in OJA Data Lab. So, this is the part from Fernando, and to obtain skills to write own SQL scripts and generate various OJA tables to Excel files. Because uh, today, of course, it's not only to rewrite the scripts that I will share with you, copy and paste, it's not like this, but you will have this chance to test yourself whether you can write some different SQL queries on OJA data. And the last slide from myself in this first part uh, is the background of Work Package 2. Because why we need this training session for all WIN members? Because we are thinking that the wider use of the OJA Data Lab will help us to increase the quality, for example. Because uh, when you are using Data Lab, when you are not only reading about Data Lab, but when you are using the Data Lab, probably you will have some remarks, you will have some feedback. And please contact Fernando, or uh, I think mostly Fernando, uh, when you see that something is wrong with the data for your country, uh, it will help us a lot to increase the quality and general um, overview of this uh, data lab, how it should be used. So uh, what is the most important? That in Work Package 2, we've got Task 2, which is based on OJA scripts developed in Data Lab. So the training today will cover these aspects that should be a part of a contribution from Work Package 2. And also task three is preparation of the suggested indicators to move to the production. I will not tell you right now what we thought about the indicators because there are people not only from work package two, but from other work packages. But later I will tell you exactly what we agreed during the meeting in Warsaw when we have this practical exercises. And that's it from my part uh, regarding this first part of the meeting. And now I would like to give the floor to Fernando Reich from Eurostat, who will present a set of tables that exist in Data Lab and also some explanation to variables and documentation where to find different issues. So, Fernando, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jacek. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to see that we have a lot of participants. Uh, so, I will start by sharing my screen. I will talk about um, I will talk about the uh, so the way we organize the the OGA data, which might well be 
you know, uh, how we will do it in, um, in the week for the other use cases. Um, also telling a little bit the story why we organize this way. I know that if you go to the data lab and you list all the tables and all the databases, you're going to get a little bit lost. But uh, there is a reason for it, and I hope that after uh, explanation today, um, it will become clear to navigate these tables. Okay. Um, so there are a few concepts that we developed for uh, the rules and conditions on access to, to data, and this is because we have users that wanted to uh, uh, you know, wanted to use the, the OGA data that we had in Data Lab. At the same time, uh, we had special collaborations, uh, including with, with the Web Intelligence Network. So we needed to start to organize things. Okay, so we came up with the several uh, um, uh, concepts, and the first one is the one of uh, access domain. Okay, um, normally we have a public domain; we make everything public. In our case, in the Web Intelligence Hub, we wanted to involve national statistical institutes, so we needed to have, you know, the, the area where the official statisticians are. Uh, at the same time, as we were not ready to make anything public yet, we need a kind of intermediate step, right? Uh, so we have a public uh, a domain, where we have no data in the public domain uh, at the moment. Uh, we have what we call a restricted domain, and then we have what confidential domain, because this is where we would have uh, statistically confidential data. Okay, uh, so normally we would have kind of three rules: one rule for each uh, each domain. But we need a little bit more of granularity. We came up with the idea of the the rules uh, for the public domain. You will have the general public, anonymous people. Uh, we will have that group of people that will have access to the access. Uh, uh, sorry, the restricted access domain. We call them analysts. And then in the confidential, we will distinguish three groups. OK, uh, let me start from the bottom. Uh, the producers uh, on one hand, uh, and these would have um, read write access. These would have to need, need to have access to everything we have there. OK, and to manipulate things. Uh, but we also should also foresee uh, the cases where official statisticians should have access actually to everything because they're producing statistics, but we need to have some kind of control access so we don't end up with a mass. So they will have a read access to, to these, uh, all this information. So we have this uh, second official statistician role. Um, in the latest discussions we had it, uh, at, uh, uh, with the directors of methodology, um, we were asked to, to think specifically about the research community. And uh, um, we came up with a, 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 you know, the research area where we don't provide access to everything um, because we need somehow to curate and maintain, you know, uh, uh, control exactly. Although you can have uh, confidential data, we need to have some control of what confidential data are we giving access. Okay, so we came up with a uh, with a role of scientific researcher. So crossing this, we came up with what we call the uh, data access areas. OK, and here. Um, the purpose is to uh, normally you have access to a particular area and all the data that is in that area. We would just make an exception for the research area. Yeah, so whatever uh, uh, is in the public domain, um, and uh, the accessible to the general public would call the public area. Um, whatever we have in the restricted domain accessible by analysts, we call the analytical area. At some point, we call this restricted area. You might have heard other names before. We kind of uh, struggle a bit to find a good uh, balance uh, and a solution for this puzzle who should have access to what. So, th so these are the names that we are adopting now. Uh, and then uh, in the confidential domain, we will have three areas, the research area, a inspection area for the official statisticians, and then what we call the production area. OK. There is one last uh, uh, concept that we introduced, uh, and that is the concept of layer. In reality, it really only applies to the in the production area, OK, because we only have dissemination in the other. OK, and in this simulation layer, so what distinguishes these, the layers are, I would say, the steps in the production process. OK, um, so 
in the data lake, this is where we have all the data. So right now, um, only the production team has access to the to the data lake. But of course, in the future, uh, uh, other people could have access to the data lake. Now, in the data lake, uh, I would say the level of the food documentation would be uh, uh, would be lower. Um, while in the dissemination, the, the upper level, the dissemination layer, we want to be sure that we have, you know, uh, proper documentation. All the, the data dictionaries are complete. We have good explanations of what are what is included in the variables. While in the data lake, sometimes you would need to go to the scripts to really understand what is there. Um, we have a validation area, and this is this really exists right now. And at some point, we had a confusion because actually we call them areas, okay? Uh, and uh, so as we have data access areas, we need to change the name, so we call it layers now. So in the validation layer, this is where from the data lake, um, the, the things are composed into uh, tables that can be used. This is in the presentation layer. And then it is moved to the validation area to be validated. So the validation layer, sorry, I think I'm saying like area sometimes. It's it's just because I'm used to it, okay? I apologize, layer. In the validation layer, this is where, in the particular case of online job advertisements, we do the validation before we move it to the dissemination layer. Yeah. The archive layer is because everything that we release at some point, uh, I will talk about the deprecation policy. There are some uh, uh, tables that we remove from uh, from the access, uh, but we don't delete them. They are all stored in the archive layer. So this is how we organize uh, uh, the access uh, to the data. Today, we're going to talk about the tables and the data that we have in the analytical area only, okay? So, um, in the analytical area, we have uh, two databases, uh, one data flow out there, uh, I would call, and we call it, in fact, in the in the wiki, uh, which is the WEOGA, and this is the classified data, okay? These are the ones we're going to look at uh, now. In the other areas, uh, just as an example, what we have in the research area, this is where we have the OGA NLP, where we have job titles and job descriptions, we have the WEOGA ontologies. These are the ontologies that are used for the automatic classifiers. Um, and then in the inspection area, so only accessible to what we call official statisticians, we have what we call the WEOGA complete. This is a copy of the WEOGA that we have in the analytical area, but all the variables. Yeah. So there is additional information. There are some additional variables that uh, uh, that we're not going to put in the analytical area because they are confidential in particular but sometimes they may be experimental okay um besides these oga data we also we also have information about the oga sources uh that uh, uh that we consider now to be confidential now the nlp information about the sources at some point in time in the beginning uh, uh three years ago they were all in the same place OK, so you might have heard of this. Uh, but looking at the legislation. Uh, and reflecting, we consider that some of this data is potentially statistically confidential, and this refers to. Uh, references to economic operators or individual persons, in which case we would be talking about uh, personal data. So in the NLP, we may have a personal data there, um, as we cannot check it uh, manually, uh, and we do have some algorithms that try to do some cleaning. We may have reference to personal data in the job descriptions. Yeah. So for this reason, it is not now accessible to um, to you know anyone that requests access to the data in the analytical area, but we have moved it to the research area. Information about uh, the um, the sources that provide the data, you also consider them uh, confidential and uh, information about the companies that are recruiting. Yeah. So because we consider these confidential, we have moved them out of the analytical area and they are not available there anymore. So as, as I was saying, we're going to focus on analytical area, what we have there. This is what we're going to talk about today. 
So um, we have two databases. And the first thing to explain and to navigate to this is distinguishing the latest and the version it. OK. So the data is uh, the same, basically. OK, so it's the same data. It's a different way to refer to this data. In the latest data, we don't have reference to the release. So this is the latest OGA data that we have released. OK. Uh, the same data you're going to find in the version it. And here you see a bold. It will be the latest release that we have in the version it. Why do we have these two? In the beginning, we had some issues uh, because we were making updates to the tables and we had some colleagues from, uh, from the win uh, that were caught by surprise because their scripts were not uh, providing the same results as before. So the way we were doing it, uh, we were not allowing uh, uh, users to to have uh, reproducible scripts, yeah, or reproducible results. Let's put it this way, yeah. So, in order to uh, provide this, the ability to, so your results are reproducible, we keep the releases that we are launching over time, yeah, in the version of database. So if you want to be sure that your results are reproducible, you should refer to the tables in this database. If you're building a system and you want to use the latest or some dashboard, you want to use the latest data. That's the case, for example, uh, of uh, Cedefop. The Cedefop uses this data. They want to use the latest data. So they refer to this. So this is, um, this is basically a, a, a link. Yeah? You can look at this tables as a link to the last version that we have in the version. So that's the first distinguish between the latest and the version. It, yeah. You want to have the latest data. You were building a dashboard. You're building some kind of system. You want to use the latest data. You refer to the tables in this database. You're writing a script. You're doing some research. You want it to be reproducible. You refer to the version it database. Now, what are the tables that we have here? In the beginning, we have one table. OK, a single table. Uh, but then we felt the need to split it. Now, we have many users uh, that were surprised to find the same job advertisements several times in the table. Yeah, so the same job advertisement. One of the fields or the field, the identifier for the job advertisement is the variable OGID. And you'll find several records in the table with the same OGID. Why does this happen? Because a single job advertisement uh, may refer to several jobs in different locations. Yeah. So uh, location is a variable in this data flow and a single job advertisement may have several locations. So this would mean that if a job advertisement has two um, locations, two records would appear in the table. The same thing holds for the skill. We have one field for the skill. A job advertisement to refer to 10, 11, 15 different skills. And this would mean that it would have 10, 11, 15 records. Yeah. The last one is the source. The same job advertisement is identified in different sources. So as you know, we try to make a deduplication to identify that a single job advertisement has been published in more than one job portal. To, as, to provide information on the source, we need to make reference to the, the several sources where you can find this job advertisement. So if you find it in three different sources, you will need to have three records. This was the original uh, way we released the data, and that's the one you can find in the blended what we call the blended. So all the variables are there. All the variables are available here, but you will have a job advertisements. So several rec records for the same job advertisement. Can you use this table? Yes, uh, you can use it. You just need to, when you do the counts, you need to identify the unique job IDs. You need to count unique job IDs when you do it. If you don't, when you do you write your SQL query and you do not to counts of unique OGA IDs, they're going to be double counting job advertisements. Yeah. So you can use it. 
we're going to look at this. Um, but some, for some users, this was uh, difficult to grasp. So uh, there is a different way of organizing the data in, a, in, the, in the language of a relational database in a normalized way. And this is what we have, what we have done. Besides the blended, we have one which is called blended after, which is for the new uh, countries that have been added at the end of last year. So this table includes uh, data for Iceland, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, and Norway. So uh, these are the blended tables. We just separated the, 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 new, the new countries and the old countries. And then we have the normalized version of this. We have the main table, and these are the, the variables that are not, I would say, um, that have a single value for each job advertisement. So they are all gathered together in the main table. And then we have the several location for each job ID, the several skills for each job ID, and the several sources for each job ID. This means that you can use the normalized version, which is the set of these four tables, uh, to get information about the locations, you will need to do joins when you do the SQL. You will need to join using the OGID, the main table, with the location or the skill and so on, or, or linking all of them. Yeah, So you can get information on uh, to cross the variables that are in the main with, with the location. So you have these two ways of going, and there you don't have to worry about uh, duplicated records. At least when you are only using the main table. If you do the join, you still have to take this into account. We have also an uh, auxiliary uh, table to help you. Um, the the date in the blended of the, or the so the date in the date variables that you can find in the blended or in the main, they are in the date format that uh, uh, very often you will want to convert to a day month year format. You can do that with some functions in SQL. You can do it afterwards if you use. Uh, 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 if you you know import your data to uh, uh, to Jupiter uh, or to our studio, uh, but you can also link to the VOGA data, which converts the date format into the uh, month and um, and the year. And finally, we have the code lists. Yeah. So in the blended, you have the codes and the uh, sorry the codes and the labels. In the main and the remaining tables, you only have codes. So to get the labels, you need to link them to the code lists. So basically, you have two um, ways of accessing here this data, via a single table that includes everything, or you can use the normalized tables, yeah, the main location, skill source, link, code lists, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, do the joins, and you gain. So it's two different ways that you can do things. Now you're going to find all these tables also in the versioned, but a lot more uh, tables. As I, as I was saying, a difference in a way we are doing this. Um, and I mean, and normally uh, when in Eurostat we release uh, the statistics, you're not going to find an history. Okay, it's just you know, overrides whatever we were disseminating before. So we, I think we're doing more here. What we do here is to release microdata. So um, we want to assure that you have some uh, uh, some reproducible results. So. Uh, I think if you understand that what the way we are naming the, the the tables, then you can make sense of it. Okay, we start with VOGA and then the type of table it is, like we had before, the blended, the main, location, skill, and so on. We have the version of the table that normally it means that it's the should be the same record structure, although we are uh, discussing some versioning policy. Yeah. Um, um, so because we should be very concrete about how we do the versioning, but in the case of these, uh, uh, these data flow, the VOGA, the classified data, we have two versions, 
And this is because we have changed the record structure. OK, we are in the version two of these tables. So that's the first element, the versioning. And then we have the release, which we use the time reference. We have a, we have a quarter release. So this is the release of, in the, in the case of the first table, this is the blended table. It's the second version of the blended table. It's the release of quarter four of 2021. And then we have the release date. We may have revisions. So it may release for the same quarterly, for the same quarter release. We may we may release another one. You will see in this list that that has not happened since the beginning of 2021, but it did happen in the past. We have deprecated those tables, so you cannot find them in the database uh, anymore, and you only find a release date, a single release date for each release quarter. Yeah, but you may have more than one in case we decide to do another release. So we don't delete. We keep everything there. One thing to keep in mind is. Um, this is not a release of a, a quarter data. This is the all the data since the beginning within one additional quarter. Yeah. So in the release of 2023 quarter one, you're going to find data or the OGAs collected in the previous periods. OK. Now you can find uh, the description of the tables. Um, so the same holds for the, the, the other tables, as you can see. Yeah. I would like to make a reference to the to two links and to the wiki. Uh, you have a data dictionary and you can check the variables that are avail uh, uh, available in each one of these tables in the wiki. Yeah, if you, uh, when you get the slides, you will have these links. I will uh, um, uh, move directory to a page that they have already open. So. Um, in the wiki, where you have the list of the variables for the tables, and you have also um, the which variables are available in which tables. Where can you find this? If you go to the wiki, you go to the to the use case from where we are releasing the data online job advertisements. You will have the analytical area, like I was uh, describing. We have the weed OGA data flow, and here you have the tables. Data dictionary, description of the data, the code list, the several releases, and the deprecation rules. So in the tables, if you click on the blended tables, uh, sorry, in the blended tables, you can find the description of, uh, 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 of the table. Yeah. So you can see in which databases you can find this table, the several releases that we had. And the list of variables that you can find in this in this table. Yeah, so this is the blended, and the, as you can see, it includes all the variables. If you go to the main, you will see that we have less less variables. Now here you have the name of the variables. This is again in the list of tables that are available. If you want to know what are these variables, you go to the data dictionary. Okay. And in a data dictionary, you have all the variables listed in a single place. And you have the definitions or the technical definitions of the several variables that we have in the in these tables. Yeah. So coming back to the slides. So you have a, a description of what uh, we have in these, the blended everything. Uh, and then the what we call normalized ones, yeah, and the code lists, yeah. So, one last word for the the deprecation. Of course, that uh, we would like to uh, give the possibility that you can have re reproducible results. But as time passes by, the number of tables. Uh, if you try to access the data, you already noticed there's so many tables that you sometimes can get completely lost with this. So we needed to start to some cleaning, okay? And we wanted to do it in a in a in a kind of structured and, uh, and objective way. So the deprecation we adopted is uh, everything uh, before uh, uh, 2021 or the the fourth quarter of 2021 we have uh, deprecated and the old tables in the beginning we have some tables called ft documents we have 
uh, removed all these tables, they're not there anymore. So the rule we follow for deprecation is we keep the last four quarterly releases and we keep the fourth, so the quarter four release, what we would call an annual release for all the years. Yeah. So we're going to keep quarter four of 2021, quarter four of 2022, and when the time comes, quarter four of 2023. So at this moment, we uh, with the release of quarter one 2023, we have quarter one 2023, quarter four 2022, quarter three 2022, quarter two, and the yearly release of 2021. With the release of the next quarter, we're going to uh, uh, remove the release of quarter two 2022. So this is, you can find also in the wiki, no, not here, in the here, here the, the explanation of the deprecation rules inside the OGA. Uh, when we talk about the OEOGA data flow, you can find the OEOGA deprecation rules. So this is it uh, uh, from my side. Are there any questions? As always, that's either a good a good signal, <laughs> a good sign or a bad sign. I think there will be more questions during the our meeting, <laughs> probably. So please stay, Fernando, because definitely uh, there will be some questions regarding your part as well. OK, uh, so thank you, Fernando. And now I will go with my slides. I'm going uh, to interrupt. There's a quick question in the chat for you guys. Yeah. OK, yes, Let from me. Alberto. So why do we have multiple lines for every OGA? Because a single job advertisement may refer, it will refer to several skills, several locations, and can come from several sources. Okay, so if we want to have in the same table uh, a variable for the source, uh, for the skill, uh, for location, and the job advertisement, and if a single job advertisement refers to a job, for example, in Frankfurt and Munich, we will need two records to refer to these two. Yeah, because we don't have a variable for location one and another variable for location two. We have a single variable for location. So in order to represent two locations for the job advertisement, we have to reproduce the, the job advertisement. So that's the implication of uh, uh, having all the variables in the same table, it means that we have to kind of duplicate a lot of the information, right? Because all the other variables that are unique, they're going to be in the in the in the, in the all these uh, duplicate records. Yes, yeah, so the members of the, so there's a question from uh, Magdalena. Uh, yes, exactly. The members of the win are official statisticians. Uh, and they will have access to the inspection area. Yeah, so only the production domain right now, we're not providing uh, uh, access. Okay, I would like to add uh, that uh, both questions will be also have its uh, hands on implication in a few moments, which means that uh, uh, I will show you also the inspection area at one time for about two or three minutes. So all work package to members at the moment should have access to inspection area as well. Uh, but I know that at least one person from work package for doesn't have access. Uh, OK, so can I go with the next part? If you have any questions, anything related to the presentation by Fernando, please do not hesitate to ask question. You can use your, okay, we've got another question, uh, Fernando. Uh, no, I mean, the, the main purpose of the version of tables is to allow to have reproducible results. Um, be, because, uh, again, um, all the data since the beginning, and the, since the beginning, just to clarify, we have OGA data since quarter three, 2018. 
Yeah. So all these tables, they include all the job advertisements collected. OK, now there may be revisions. OK, and, th and there were, <laughs> that's for sure. OK, so uh, the list on the number of job advertisements uh, may change. As we detect uh, problems in the production pipeline, we make fixes, we make fixes. So with the new release, what do you get? You get data for one additional quarter. But the previous quarters are also there and 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 the revision of the previous quarters yeah so that, that's the main the main purpose of the version of tables okay uh, today we will use today we will use uh, both blended tables and version tables and i will show you for where package to it would work uh, an example on inspection area tables Okay, I think uh, we it's high time we started our hands on examples. Uh, but uh, what I told you, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to answer. Uh, you can use also your microphone. You can turn on the camera if you prefer to ask questions like this. Uh, but still, I suggest now to start this uh, hands on examples. Now, I would like to ask all of you, and now I will use a chat window to log in to Jupyter Lab. So the link that I shared with you between <laughs> Fernando uh, messages, uh, DSS, I will share this link one more time. Oh, I cannot share this link one more time because I have something different in my... Uh, okay, so please go to Jupyter Lab, everybody. And if possible, please start uh, Please open the notebook you have from this fast start with OJA Python. Okay. Please open this notebook and please generate the result, which is for PL or for your country. But it is important because we need to have a connection. So something I asked everybody last week and this week, uh, Sarah asked you as well. Uh, please now go to this file and please connect to Athena and then we will have our examples. So I am giving you two minutes to do this. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to tell you that we will start with uh, overview of tables. So we will list all the tables. I will show you how to list all the tables. Then I will show you how to list all the variables that are within a table, and then we will go to practical SQL queries, uh, select queries to get specific information from these tables. From time to time, we will have an exercise also in this first part, which means that uh, I will ask you to modify something, I will ask you to change something, I will ask you to write some query uh, to see that uh, you can follow uh, the instruction that I am giving to you. OK, so at the moment, everybody should be logged into this platform. OK, do you need uh, maybe one more minute or can I start? No intervention, so I can start. So I am moving to my presentation. So. Uh, the first point is to connect with Athena. As you know, we are using work group for, not for statisticians, but for analyticians, yes, for analytics, analytics uh, work group, which is this work group, DSL2531B, because another work group is, for example, audit, which is for inspection area. So in a few moments, I will show you that I can connect to this audit area and I can list different tables. But currently we will use blended and version tables, which means that uh, something that was uh, shown by Fernando a few moments ago, uh, we will use the tables that exist within this work group. So this is quite important. If you access Athena, you have to know which work group you are in, and then you will know what type of tables you can access. 
Okay. Okay, Sonia asked for two minutes, no worries. Uh, because, uh, okay. Uh, because when we go to the next one, I can tell you a few words about this connection. Uh, the SQL queries looks differently than in SQL Server, for example. Okay, already synchronized, great, thank you. Uh, so uh, the SQL queries are quite different. Even myself, I had to ask Matthias and Alexander uh, to help me with some queries because they were quite different than the one you know from SQL Server or from Oracle. Yes, because in Athena it looks quite different and sometimes it's not possible even to find the solution uh, on the internet because Athena is not so popular like SQL Server or others. But Alexander and Matthias are very helpful always uh, with uh, answering the questions about that. Okay, uh, just a moment because my wireless mouse stopped working, now it works. Okay. So uh, I would like to start with the first query right now, but uh, the first two queries I will share in the chat window. But later you will have to write SQL queries by yourself. I hope that everything will be fine. Please copy and paste this SQL query. Copy and paste below and execute this cell like this. You should have the following output. And now I am waiting 30 seconds. Please let me know if you cannot see the output like this. Because all of you should follow the exercises, all of you should execute the commands, all of you should be able after this meeting uh, to generate a set of tables on OJA data, on occupation, on skills, on countries. So it's important that it should work for everybody. Okay, so uh, by waiting for your feedback, uh, of course, we are waiting for negative <laughs> feedback uh, because when everything works correctly, you don't need to say anything. Uh, so just let me know uh, if something goes wrong and we will fix this. Uh, we've got Matthias here, we've got the possibility of the breakout room. So if something goes wrong, we can fix this even without uh, interrupting the main meeting. Uh, so here, as you can see, we have execute a cursor, which is a buffer of the SQL uh, database, and we show all the tables from this schema, from we access catalog, we OJA like this. These are tables. These are not variables, not columns, but tables. What uh, Fernando told you today, we will use mostly this table because this table contains everything. We don't need to join this table with other tables. Okay, Johannes, uh, you want to interrupt? No. Okay. Uh, if, uh, if you want to interrupt me, do not hesitate. Do not wait before I'm finished. Just uh, turn on the microphone and say something because uh, I am looking on two different monitors and it may be quite difficult for me to see if somebody turned on the microphone. Okay. so. Uh, we, OJA Blended, is the only table that you should know because uh, you've got everything in this table. Uh, you've got uh, not only ID of the code list, but you've got also the values, the description, everything. We don't need and we will not join any tables today because it's not necessary to join, for example, location with Blended because everything is inside the Blended table. All code lists are inside. So this is the most important table for today, but, and now I have to switch to my presentation. Uh, just a moment uh, here. But as you know, we've got different schemas, not only we OJA latest, but also we OJA versioned. And now I would like to ask everybody to modify the code here, Instead of latest, please use version and execute. Yes, instead of latest, please write version and execute. What can we see here? Something that was presented today by Fernando. Yes, we've got 
port lists. We've got blended tables for EFTA as well, which is important for Alberto, our participant uh, today. Uh, and we've got also main tables, skill tables, source tables. Everything is here in the version tables. So to sum up, today we will use mostly, except I think two or three examples, we will use only latest schema like this. I'm changing back to latest. So this is not so complicated as version schema. And please note that this is recommended schema, which means that we should use this table, not a version one, because when you are using a version one, somehow uh, you can have not the latest data or it's better to use the latest schema. So uh, today we will use mostly the latest schema. And I would like to tell you that there are more schemas that were listed today by Fernando. Now I will switch to my presentation. Uh, for instance, you can see for inspectors, you can use we OJA NLP. And now a very important message to everybody, in particular to Magdalena. Uh, Magdalena Six. Uh, so just a moment. Sorry, because I have to <laughs> switch from one application to another. And uh, now I am going to audit. I hide, um, I, uh, today I made this uh, keys not visible for you because there are special keys uh, for me to get to audit area. And I will show you that when I have this special keys, so Magdalena, you should have to apply if you want to have access to audit area. When you have this special keys, you are in the work group audit. And work group audit means that you can also access we OJA NLP schema. You can see, see here a set of tables. I will refer to NLP schema uh, today as well to show you that more information is there, including the description, uh, the raw data scraped directly from HTML code. So it is quite important for work package two when we would like to see, for example, what exactly uh, the data come from, where exactly the data come from. And uh, another is the ontologies. So it was shown also today by Fernando, uh, sources, tables, and the last one shown by Fernando, because I did this just a moment ago <laughs> based on a presentation by Fernando. So during presentation of Fernando, I did this code. And you can see here that all the schemas that were presented by Fernando works correctly, but in this audit area, in this audit working group, in this inspection area. So here in this work group 2531B DSL, uh, it's not possible, of course, to access this area. But today we will concentrate on this aspect. What I told you, we are planning with Sara uh, to have the next training also on OJA, but more advanced examples uh, in October, because currently we would like to increase the number of people using OJA data, because what I told you, it will also increase the quality. Uh, what, uh, yes, you need to belong to audit group. You know, Sonia, I was talking about you exactly with, that's why I told you that at least one person uh, doesn't have access to audit because I know about you. And I was talking about you with Matthias and Alexander, uh, and uh, I think we will fix it because you need to be, uh, because currently all people who are in work package two are in the audit area because Alexander has a list of work package two members and they are in audit area, in inspection area, sorry, as well. So uh, we will fix this after the meeting. Uh, Sonia, uh, I will write an email to everybody what to do if you need to access this inspection area. But uh, if you don't need this access, I am talking to everybody because it is very, very important. Yes, sometimes you're enrolling to one role and uh, after some time you are not in Web Intelligence Network anymore. We've got such uh, people that we don't know what to do, whether to suspend the role or not. So if you don't need access to inspection area, please do not apply for this access uh, because it is only for selected users like Sonia, like uh, Magdalena, Work Package 2. Okay, so now I will go to 
uh, sorry, uh, I got lost. <laughs> I have to go to my presentation. And you, you know now how to list all tables. Uh, according to the question by Giuseppina, these slides will be shared in Where Package 2 area, but also probably will be shared by Sarah. Uh, so you will have all code that we are executing also on slides. So just copy and paste and you will have all the uh, all information. Now, uh, I would like to give you a very, very basic information on typical select query. Uh, I think that for all of you, <laughs> this is uh, extremely easy to get information from table, but just to be sure that everybody understands the structure of select queries, uh, I would like to tell you that we always start select query, then we've got column names, like here, room number capacity, column names, it can be one column. If you have additional column, you should separate them by comma. Yes, so one column, comma, another column, comma, another column, from, and then table name. So this is one example. It's not uh, for OJA, but it is a general example from one of my lectures, how to get information from CDK table. Uh, you select room number and capacity of this room, for example, 30 persons or 50 persons like this. But if you want to select all uh, columns, which is not recommended in OJA, because the tables are very, very huge. You will see in a few moments at the next slide, because we will, um, we will execute the next command, and you will see that the, there are so many columns that in this data lab, it's not possible to see all of them at one time. So uh, we will have something. Uh, we have to limit. Yes, we have to limit number of columns like this, room number capacity. And now uh, it's something different that I recommended to you <laughs> because we will select all columns from this blended table. Just a moment, I will copy and paste this uh, code. This is the last copy and paste for today, uh, but I will copy and paste. But I would like to explain you first. We are using the cursor, cursor to execute this select. It will select all columns, not all data. Students usually, when I am asking what is asterisk, they, they say all data, not all data. All columns from this table, OJ blended, limit one. So there will be only one row selected. Limit one means one row. In SQL Server, in Microsoft SQL Server, equivalent col column is, sorry, equivalent function is top, equivalent keyword. Yes, select top one from, uh, it is like in SQL Server, here we have to use limit one. It means that the first row will be selected. And now I am sharing with you this code. <coughs> Sorry, and we will spend a few moments uh, with this slide. So please copy and paste and answer the question. What is the output of this query? I need your interaction right now. You can use a chat window or you can use a microphone. You can turn on the camera, but tell me what is the output of this query? Later, I will ask Mattia. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chert. <laughs> I was <laughs> rather thinking, yes, about uh, Mattia. Thank you, Mattia. Yes, the name of the columns. So all the variables. Thank you. By the way, thank you, Chert, also for uh, providing the list of columns because we will use the columns in exercises, which means that uh, now we have this in the chat window, which is quite uh, important for us. Yes, the names of columns, you're right. Uh, it is the list of columns, but is it only the list of columns? No. Now I will switch. Uh, first of all, uh, before we go to the next uh, item, I would like to ask everybody if it works. Uh, sorry, if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, let us know.
Thank you. It means that it works. Later, I will ask Matthias to tell me whether all people presented at the meeting used the uh, data lab, just to be sure that you have executed and you know how to use it, because this is our intention. Yes, it's not only to have a training, but to give you basics on using the data lab, that you can use the data lab, that you can see that the data lab exists. Because for some of you, I think this is the first time you are using data lab. Uh, and now, uh, please note that, of course, these are column names because we have used the following function. Uh, documents, then columns, then values, then to list, which means that this is the list that we can display the list of columns. Now, I would like to ask all of you to write something more, but it is hands-on. So now hands on the keyboards and we will write our first thing. Please write documents head. This is a Python, <clears throat> sorry, this is a Python data frame. So you can see now that this query didn't generate list of columns, but this query in fact returned first row from the database, yes, from the table. Of course, first row, uh, you know that uh, it's not indexed, I think. Uh, so we've got the first row that was selected. You should have the same row, uh, but something like this should be. Yes, it's actually an example. Yes, Olaf, I am a teacher. Sorry about that, that sometimes I have this, uh, <laughs> this uh, teaching appearance, this teacher appearance, <laughs> and I am asking you instead of explaining you, uh, but uh, this is something uh, that is here. So documents head, it displays first five, first five rows in the data frame, but because we had a limit one row, we've got only one uh, row here inside. And what I want to show you with this, that you don't see all of variables. 59 variables, yes? Because in Python, can you see, we've got something like more and then the last few columns. So now I suggest to do something more, uh, something more um, advanced. We will list all the columns and values in 59 rows or in 100 rows. So please write something like this. For column name, in column names, print documents, column name. Uh, let me check because I don't have anything. Okay, it works, fine. And we will go through the variables right now. What was also demonstrated by, uh, by um, Fernando today, uh, but I would prefer now to go through this list step by step. We have something like a few minutes. Yes, Pina, you want to say something? No, because it seems you have started. Okay, I am not sharing the screen. Okay. Okay, I am not sharing the screen because Pina probably started to share by mistake. Okay. Please write for column name in column names, print documents, column name. If it doesn't work, let me know. I am here to help you. So uh, no worries, Tina. No worries, Tina. It happens. Sometimes uh, it happens. If it doesn't work, let me know. If you are using Python for the first time, I would like to tell you that this indentation is important. Without indentation, it will not work. Yes. So please remember to have tab here or at least space here. Indentation is important. If you don't do this, you will receive an error. Indentation, indentation error. Yes. You need to use tab or space. And now this is the last example of basics. We will go through these items. It works, but results are different. Okay, Bartosz, 
uh, I think that uh, everything is fine. Maybe it is randomized, yes, because we didn't. Uh, okay, Alexandra, thank you so much. Uh, this is something because when we are using select, I don't know the Athena environment very well here in this OJ data lab, but we didn't randomize the query because uh, in a few moments uh, when we have another example, that will it will be randomized. Uh, but uh, it was, of course, the first row uh, taken from this database, so it may be different. But it's better even because we can compare the results. So first of all, OJ ID. It is not unique. It's not primary key. It is not unique, uh, which means that uh, we have duplicates, but because of something that you will see in a few moments. Fernando explained this, but if you didn't understand exactly how it works, you will see by this example. Then we've got, uh, so uh, the, <clears throat> sorry, OJ ID is an object, which is a string, in fact, yes. Another is, first active date, which is an object. Uh, however, uh, in SQL, it works as date. Uh, in SQL, we will convert the data into date to compare with this parameter. So it is date, in fact, in SQL, in Athena. Uh, then we've got the date split into day, which is integer, uh, month integer, and year integer. Then we've got last active date. I hope that you understand first active date and last active date. It means that the job advertisement is not uploaded. It's not uh, put in on the website for one day, but it can stay on the website for half year, like here, yes, for four months. That's why we've got first active date and last active date. Then we've got something like this which means that last active year, month, day. Then we've got language, which is DE. It is ISO 3166 uh, specification standard. Uh, so uh, with two digits, so DE, PL, PT, AT, uh, these are the value values. Then we've got occupations, something that is important for you. But for us, it's not important, at least at this training session, to have IDs, but below you can find, uh, in fact, a description yes, of this uh, specific ID. So for example, here we can see that this job, this advertisement is related to specialist medical practitioners, medical doctors, health professionals, and professionals. We've got one digit, two digits, three digits, and four digits. Four digits is here. Yes, two, two, one, two is uh, specialist medical practitioners. By the way, I would like to tell you that uh, the annotation exercise, the quality check, quality evaluation by Work Package 2 that was done last year was on four digits. Yes, so uh, we know the quality indicators for four digits data. And now, uh, if we go below, we've got also hierarchy, hierarchy of uh, skills. Uh, but uh, the most important for us is, of course, is, of course, uh, the not ID, but uh, hierarchy three, hierarchy two, and hierarchy one. Yes, for example, health and welfare, health, medicine. So these are skills based on this job description. Uh, Below, we can see, for example, city. It's not filled because sometimes uh, it's not possible to extract this information. Uh, but uh, there is NATS level, for example. Yes, Lippe, I don't know uh, in Deutschland uh, if Alexandra know where is Lippe, Alexandra or Heidi. Uh, but still, uh, you can see that it's possible, of course, to extract some information, not always city, but maybe a region. But city should be also in many job advertisements, you can see later. Uh, then we've got, of course, country, De uh, Deutschland, Germany. Uh, then we've got education. For example, what is needed? Short cycle tertiary education, which is educational uh, level of ISCED, International Standard Classification of Education 5. Then below we've got economic activity, but uh, 
uh, Dominic Blatt from Netherlands can say lots about the uh, matching economic activity and job advertisement, and we know that uh, we should work also on this aspect. And uh, okay, in a few moments I will answer Alex uh, when I finish. And uh, here you've got also work in time experience. Uh, that is needed for this job advertisement from two to four years. Uh, where was it found? In the job search engine, and it was found on the German website, DE. And the source is stable. Sometimes sources are not stable. We know this. We know this because we had a meeting, for example, in Austria, uh, in Vienna, uh, in February this year, in which we have talked about the non stability data sources as well. OK, so Alex, is this actually a table that contains all the information or just a view that merged everything in today? Uh, this is, uh, if I understand you correctly, uh, this is the table blended. Can you see? This is the table blended. So it contains all the information. It has a code list inside. We don't need to join this table with another table. Uh, so I don't know if I have answered your question. You can uh, turn on the microphone because. Uh... Uh, yeah, I, I was just surprised that all the information is actually in one table because that's not. How databases are usually organized, um, but it, it's it's nice to to exit it th that way. Um, uh, it's more a technical question. It's, it doesn't matter too much, but it's it's nice that we have everything in one go. Yes, uh, because the goal is uh, that everybody without special skills, advanced skills, should use the table, yes? And Fernando wants to say something. Just to answer uh, Alex's uh, question, this is the, uh, the main table. This is how it is stored, is everything together. The normalized tables, main, location, skills, those are views of this table. The reason why is every, it's everything together it's because of the size. It's, I would say, the big data way of doing it. OK, um, so in order to reduce the amount of joins, joins are very expensive. And when you have very large amount of data, uh, sometimes it's not feasible. So this is actually how the data is stored. OK, thank you, Fernando, and thank you, Alexander, for this question. I hope that now everybody understands what is in the blended table, because we saw examples. Uh, now we will learn with a few examples, something like 10 to 15 examples, how to filter the data, how to group the data, how to list, for example, data for one or two or three countries. So it will be now basics of SQL. Uh, follow names, but uh, it was already delivered by chart, but just in case I listed here, because you can see that there are 59 columns, 59 variables in this blended table. OK, so now I ask everybody. Uh, OK, it will be the last <laughs> the last one I will share with you. Uh, sorry, I will share with you. Uh, in the chat window. Uh, OK, please copy and paste, but this is the last one. Later you modify by yourself. But now uh, Usually the slides have the title like this. What is the output of this query? But please do not paste the output because it is quite long. But just let me know what is the output of this query? What is the difference between that one and the previous one? You can use a microphone. Maybe it is more efficient to talk directly. Our sample now has 1,000 lines instead of just one teacher. Exactly. Uh, so currently in our data frame, in uh, the Python data frame, we've got 1,000 observations. Yes, Olaf, thank you. 1,000 observations. Thank you, Sonia, for the answer, because it's better when somebody is answering, because I know that I am not talking to myself. OK, so now I will also uh, use this query, and I will show you how 
you can limit, for example, to display the first 10 lines, okay? To display the first 10 lines, because you can see that it's not possible in JupyterLab to display all of them. How to display the first 10 lines? It's head 10. Please use this query. And below in the next one, is my sample head. Okay, I will use a chat window because uh, head one. And if you want to display last, for example, five observations, it is by default tail. You display five last observations. Uh, you know, because we've got very limited time, but in my opinion, I don't know if Matthias can confirm this, it's better to limit a uh, number of re uh, number of rows at CQ, not in data frame, because it is more efficient. Uh, because I noted that some of you uh, are um, are uh, taking everything from CQ to data frame, and then the data frame is used to filter. I think it is not that efficient. It's better to filter everything at CQ level and limit number of observations to the ones you need. Yes, because it's possible, of course, to use data frame to filter, to change something, but it's better, of course, to use uh, CQ. I hope that Matthias agree with me that it's better to formulate better CQ query than uh, filter everything in the data frame. Yes, Matthias? Yes, I agree with you from two reasons. First of all, uh from the reasons that you transfer less data to between the sql to your uh, data lab and the second you lose less memory in data lab so there is less limitations there in this case yes so please always know not to select without limit or not to uh, it's better to test the select query with limit first and then without limit if you know that the select query is working correctly because in the buffer you will have billions of rows, and in fact, uh, maybe a data lab will not work correctly for everybody, will be very slow or something like this. Okay, so thank you, Matthias. And now we are going to the next slide, and fortunately, we will have our first practical query. Now it's time for you. Something has changed. Uh, Please copy and paste and change asterisk into occupation for that four digit and country and change limit to 10 and display the documents. Yes, we will have only first 10 rows displayed now. Uh, I know what I did. <laughs> okay, I will do this later. But it's time for you, please modify the query above. You can copy and paste, but you will have all the slides available after the session. So, because currently in the session, uh, oh, sorry, in the slides, we've got also solution for some exercises. That's why I cannot share with you the, the slides right now, because you will have some exercises today, like exam, what Olaf said. Okay, change uh, asterisk to occupation for the country and limit 10. And I have a question. Uh, any of you, if you can use a chat window or you can use a microphone, please tell me what do you see in the country column? What is in the country column? Is this PL, perhaps? Or is this Germany, perhaps? Okay, so yes, country names, but yes, uh, Chert, very good, very good uh, answer, Chert. Country names, but in local language, Polska. Yes, Polska, you may not know, Poland is Polska. Uh, Germany is Deutschland, we know. Uh, but uh, different countries, yes, uh, may have different names. So now, please note uh, that it is something like this because I made a mistake once upon a time when I wanted to display data for Poland uh, and I used some kind of regular expression and uh, I had different results, yes, because it wasn't Poland, but it was Polska. So uh, please be aware of this, that we've got 
the data in local language now I am generating. Can you see that it's not that fast? Yes. Oh, we can see here Deutschland, Polska, and United Kingdom, for example. Okay, so we've got here equation for D, but uh, just to let you know, we have discussed also with Alexander yesterday. Uh, we have to be aware when you want to publish occupation at 4D uh, for digit because uh, we are still evaluating this uh, uh, this uh, variable. Yes, so it's better to use uh, more general ones. Uh, but uh, I hope that in two years we will fix the quality issues. Uh, at least we will recommend something for Win users. Yes, uh, ISO 3166, exactly, yes, ISO 3166, it is two letter, yes, AT for Austria. Italia, yes, Italia is uh, in Italian, yes. Okay, in Polish, Włochy, by the way, completely different. Uh, okay, I think that you did this because there are so many uh, things in this. Okay, so I will go with the next one. Uh, just a moment. Uh, here, okay. Filtering the data. Uh, this is something that really was very hard for me in Athena. Even I am using SQL for 20 years, I think, yes. I am using SQL for 20 years. Uh, I think I am very advanced user of SQL, very, very advanced. But I had problems in uh, filtering the Athena expressions. <laughs> so uh, in filtering Athena data, uh, that's why I asked Matthias and Alexander, but uh, Alexander had some time to help me. Uh, so. Uh, select column name, column name from table, and then you've got where, and where expression is used to filter the data. Exactly, exactly, Alex. Uh, oh, sorry, exactly, Fernando. Yes, because Fernando cited Alex. Okay, uh, so we've got some expressions like equal, more than, less, more than equal, less than equal, please note that this is this way. If you know Excel, you know this. Yes, if you know Excel, you know this because it is still the same, uh, but first more uh, or less and then equal, not like uh, more equal. And of course, different, but we can use also like expression. And if we are using like and expression, we can use some kind of regular expression. It's not regular expression because it looks like quite different, but you can use some patterns. For example, A percent means that word starts with A. Percent A, words ends with A. Percent A percent, having A in the word. And A underscore underscore, three character word starts with A. There are two underscores after A, yes. Three character word starts with A. So we will have something like this, but also it's quite important. We will have this exercises before the break. We will have three examples before the break. So you can also use word expression with in. In means that you can use a set of uh, values that will be tested with word expression. And of course, some of you, if you are seeing this for the first time, you may not understand, but if we do three examples right now, this is first example, 3A, you will understand how it works. Uh, okay, so now it's time for you to change the previous select query to have the following data. Select occupation for the country, country ID from we access catalog and so on, where country ID equals and not PL, your country, okay? Uh, but for uh, for Alberto, I didn't want to say this, but I will say at, uh, right now that I had problems accessing EFTA tables, which means that, uh, Alberto, I think you should use another country, not Switzerland, because I had problems. It gives me zero, um, zero rows, this EFTA table. I don't know why, but it's better not to. Uh, talk about this right now, maybe later after the meeting. Yes? Okay, so I don't know why I couldn't find them. Okay, in blended EFTA. Frankly speaking, I did this today during presentation by uh, Fernando and I couldn't find this. Okay, Olaf, 
great. It's nice to know Netherlands uh, here. Uh, so we've got the data, country Netherlands, 10 first observations. And we can see here that ISO, of course, is this international, but the name of the country is in local language. And we've got these occupations at 40. OK, so we have limited to one country. Now, I have another exercise. I hope that it works. We've got five minutes before the break, and we need to do two examples. Another example is creepy. If you can modify only this part, like P, and this is something that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, really um, find the solution for this. We need to use double percent. It's natural for me. I understand this. I understood this before I did this, but uh, I couldn't get this. Uh, and that's why I needed help from Matthias and Alexander, uh, Alexander Skibinski. So uh, we need to use double percentage because percent in Python is a special character. It's escape character, like in Java um, backslash, yes? So it is escape character, and we have to use double percent to have percent in this string. So in fact, it's like P percent, but uh, we have to write to percent. And tell me, what is the result of this query? Is, are there one country in the result? No, not only Poland, also Portugal. Yes, Poland and Portugal are quite close based on the name, but also um, Netherlands and Poland are quite close because our short name ends with L. <laughs> But next time you should do percentage percentage T because then we would have Austria and Italy both uh, with Portugal instead okay. of just Poland and Portugal. Yes, 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 you're right. You're right, yes, that they are quite similar. But sometimes we need to find something. Uh, maybe not a country like this, but for example, if you want to find uh, all occupations related to software developers, yes, you can use this percentage just to write software. Yes, software tester, software developer, or something like this. So it is quite important to know how it works. Okay, thank you, Evelina. Thank you, Olaf, for the results, Polska. Okay. Uh, okay, software developers are quite common. I can see in the in here. Yes, Polska, thank you. <laughs> Polska and Netherlands. Uh, okay. Now I am going to the next uh, 3C. This is the last one uh, before the break. We've got two minutes. And please note that we are using in expression this time. OK, uh, by the way, uh, Sarah gave us uh, a feedback link. So I will share with you one more time at 2.30. 2.30? No. Oh my god. At 2.30, I have another meeting. So we have to <laughs> finish the training sharp to 30. I was thinking that we are, that we are finishing at 2 p.m. and uh, I had OEC meeting at 2.30 today, so we have to finish sharp at 2.30. Okay, uh, but uh, can you see here that there is some kind of difference? What is the result? What countries are included? Please modify this in expression. Very important. We are not having here a complete introduction to SQL queries because there are many, many different expressions that you can use, but uh, it is oriented to something you can use in, yes, Italia, Polska, and Portugal should be here as well. Yes, Donatus, thank you. Poland, Italia, Polska. By the way, I don't know why Italia is in uppercase and Polska is in lower, uh, in uh, start with uppercase, but in lowercase. OK, so I'm happy that we have done these three examples before the break. And uh, after the break, we need this half an hour break. Yes, right now. Uh, and very important information for all of you. Uh, we have to disconnect from this meeting and connect to another meeting. 
the link after the break is different. You have received from Sarah, uh, so you can see this uh, uh, in email. Now, uh, can you see my email? I don't know. I hope there is no sensitive information. Yes. Uh, so uh, here in the calendar, you can see that there is another link. So if you leave the meeting right now, please connect to the next meeting. Yes, that is session two. This is another link. It's not the same one. If you stay here, you will not be at the next meeting. Now I am leaving, which means that you cannot ask me any questions for the next half an hour, and I am connecting directly to the second session. Thank you. Thank you, Jacek. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.